So with the pick and plonk activity, what we're going to do is choose three things from our setup. So this could be a still life or it could be a room that you're sat in. Now those three things could be a combination of things. So it could be shape, it could be a texture, it could be a line. It could be something you're really particularly drawn to, like that blue colourful, kind of that blue colour is really kind of standing out to me. It could be this sort of shape here, that's the, this kind of uh, these rings of that kind of metal frame. It could be the shape of these black gloves that you're really interested in. But what we're going to do is just choose three different things from your room. So I want you to have a little look around and take a little bit of time to choose those three things. What we're then going to do is draw those three things really freely on a piece of paper. It's become quite windy in my studio. I've got the door open because it's nice and warm today. But what we're going to do is draw those three things on a blank piece of paper, okay? We're not gonna take long to do it. We're going to use either watercolors to do a watercolor sketch, or you could use coloring pencils, or you could use maybe a fine liner, or you could use paint, other, some other kind of paint. The material is up to you, but I would like us to try and include some color in this. I'm gonna do a little demonstration next using some watercolour and I'm going to do a watercolour sketch and I ask you to try and draw three different variations um, so in in doing that why I why I don't just kind of stick with one is because the more you look at, the, at something the more you find and more you understand about what you're interested in and uh, you might repeat some of the shapes and things like that, but essentially what I'd like you to do is three different drawings, colourful drawings, using three different shapes picked up and plonked onto your paper. So we're picking, so those shapes could be, as I said, say I, say I kind of like chose, chose three different th things right now. So one could be this blue kind of cut plastic shape. That's one shape. Another shape might be this kind of beautiful purple leaf and that outline and some of the detailing within too. That's the second, okay? And then the third might be this kind of uh, fabric underneath that's here. I'd like you to kind of just spend 30 seconds on each of those shapes. We're just picking up essential things and plonking them down on our piece of paper. It might be really different to what you're used to doing, especially when you're looking at something quite traditional uh, in terms of like still life. But we're just choosing three different things from our setup or from our room and plonking them on our piece of paper. I didn't, I'd advise you to kind of watch the, watch the demonstrations that I'm gonna do next, just to sort of give you an idea of what I'm asking you to do. So you might have seen from my demonstrations that those sketches, what we're thinking about doing when I'm 
what I'm thinking about doing when when kind of conducting these drawing exercises is literally just picking up picking up the um, the essential shapes that are in front of me. I'm not trying to get any detail at all and they are kind of like a record of just something that's seen very quickly. I've still got the still life around me, it's behind me, so I can, I've can. i still got it as reference and you might still be in your room but there are, th there are three pages that have been completed with those three different things on. So uh, this was that kind of black pipe and I really like the kind of repetition of the line, the pattern in that pipe. I really like the pattern within the plug um, the kind of repetition of the circles and this was the empty space of the jug so this kind of I really like this shape and it's almost something that's so all of these things are when we look at the still life we can see them but if we don't if we aren't looking at the still life then we don't really know what they are and I really quite like that uh, these again very simple so they're almost kind of like me helping my memory they're just a jogger for my memory so I know these these shapes are kind of from the cactus um, from the spikes from the cactus um, but uh, they go into kind of become not cactus like for sure when we kind of progress with them this was the plant and this was the glove uh, this was that blue kind of plastic kind of piece that was kind of just clinging on to one of the objects. This was a kind of outline shape, kind of a contour of one of the plants. And this was from one of the kind of plastic objects that was in the, that is in the still. So first of all, what I'm going to do is kind of tape this down just so it doesn't move too much around too much when I'm working on it. And I've got my paints to hand and I'm going to start off by just kind of like using a pencil just to kind of really lightly sketch in the things I'd like to do. Again, I'm using this really lightly so uh, my kind of paints can easily kind of work on the top I can easily work on the top of them using paint or I could easily rub them out if I'm not too happy with them so I'm going to go with that idea that I said just now taking that blue this kind of blue shape and scaling it up so it forms the background of this painting so all I'm going to do is kind of initially start drawing some squares What I really like about working like this is how we can invent and play and the world that we've looked at becomes like clay. It can be squeezed, it can be stretched and it becomes something else every time you work with it. So that's just an indication of what I'd like. I'm going to draw then some circles. So those circles I'm going to bring in. And again, I'm drawing really lightly on the paper. Those circles I've kind of upscaled as well and I'm kind of moving them around. I don't feel like they always need to be in that line. I'm playing around with them. So again, I'm a bit able to pick up what I want and discard anything I don't really want. So I've got the blue, kind of a suggestion that I put the blue there. I've got a suggestion that I put those black circles there. And then what might else, what else might I use? Hmm. It'd be quite funny to kind of bring this hand in. I quite like that idea. 
sort of bring in and I, that's coming from a different angle so I'm gonna just play around with that again I'm you can probably sense how how much I play with these initial shapes and how much I extend them so you might or may or may not be able to see that sketch I'm gonna hold it up so this is really simple so yeah those are the three different shapes from different drawings and I've completely taken them apart them taken them apart and plugged them so I picked and plonked onto this idea shape onto, onto this idea page that's my first idea my second idea is I think I might use the a color from the still life so that kind of wine red I might use that as the kind of background color what I might like to do is start putting some of these kind of blue uh, objects, these kind of, this, that, to reference that blue plastic. I'm going to kind of create a repeat pattern by just kind of making them look as though they're kind of falling on this, on this frame, within this frame. So as if they've multiplied. So if it, as if I've multiplied that kind of blue line, this blue shape. As if I've multiplied that and tossed them up in the air like confetti and they've just landed. And I've popped that down as a comp fun composition. Again, I'm really having I'm fun. I'm having fun. I'm not thinking about being exact at all. I quite, I'm just going to see what those two are like on that one. It looks quite busy, so I might, might not put it all in. The next one, um, what shall I do for the next one? I've had some ideas about kind of having kind of a two layer kind of painting based on the pink and the, and the red that was in my still life. So I might kind of, kind of create Because they're kind of the rectangular kind of shapes of fabric, which have been layered, well laid down on the on the table. So I'm just going to kind of create um, two rectangles on there, one for, which will be the pink and one which will be red. I might include some of the green from the plant to create like the background. I'm then going to bring in those really nice kind of star sort of shapes. I'm just going to indicate really lightly those kind of cactus spikes. So I've got the fabric, I've got the cactus. What else might I want in this? Do I want anything else? Am I happy? To see how that composition lies with me to start off with. So I'll hold this up. Again, these are quick pencil sketches. So this was my first taking the blue shape, upscaling it so it forms the background, repeating some of those black circle motifs, and taking the bringing the glove in there like a little hand kind of creeping in. This is going to be a red background, taking that red from the fabric that's laid down as part of the still life. And then this again is the blue plastic, which you can see I've kind of upscaled here, but I've reduced the scale in this, but I've repeated it. Made them like confetti that's been thrown up and plonked, landed onto this sheet. And then the last one then, I thought about these rec the rectangles, the rectangular kind of shapes that the fabric creates on the tabletop. So one will be pink, one will be red, and take some, make some of that green. Um, I'm also thinking about colour here. So uh, one being red, one being green. Red and green are complementary colours. Um, 
I also really like the combination of red and blue so I'm going to see how that works in that painting um, and on this I'm going to have that bright yellow as well so it's going to be quite zingy I think this one so I'm going to paint these up and we'll come back we'll reconvene These were the three ideas, again watercolour and sketches, so you can see that they are just in the sketches state. Um, I really like how some of these have turned out, so just to recap, we've gone from, gone from the three kind of peck and plonk activity, um, activities where we've looked at a still life or a room, We've chosen three things from that room and we've plonked them down onto a piece of paper like these. And then what we've done is sort of introduce different ways of then using some of those shapes and colours and things like that and thought about repetition and scale. So um, this was upscaling one of the blue, the little blue plastic and sort of exaggerating it, stretching it. Um, this was taking the red of the fabric in the still life and then the blue plastic and downsizing it, but repeating it to make them look like they're falling or as, they, as though their confetti dropped onto the page. And then this one was slightly different. It didn't really kind of take on the scale of repetition, but it's sort of like, uh, I was taking the green idea from the cactus, the yellow spikes of the cactus, and then plonking these sorts of colors, which are the two colors of the fabric that are part of the still life. So this is one method that I might use for abstraction so if you're interested in kind of like abstract shapes, abstract paintings, which kind of, and you kind of wonder how you've got, how people have gotten there, um, then this is one way for you to enter that kind of approach. Again, playing around, different way of seeing, different way of working for you all, I hope. And just a, an, again, an introduction to how I might work that you can kind of take forward into your art activities whilst at home.